Okay, let's solve an example problem for viscosity concept. Here's what the example reads. A 1 kg block slides down 10 degree inclined surface with 1 mm thick glycerin between the block and the inclined surface. If the block makes a 1 meter square contact with the oil, find the terminal velocity of the block. Let me first draw this. It's a 10 degrees, so it's a fairly slow, small angle. So this is 10. Okay, and I have a block over here. And this block is sliding down over here. Okay, and there's some glycerin in between the, those two surfaces. And the other thing that I want to talk about is what is the definition of terminal velocity? Terminal velocity means that if I let this go, this is going to accelerate, 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 and it's going to reach a maximum velocity. It is going to stay at that particular velocity. It's not going to increase, it's not going to decrease. So at that terminal velocity, acceleration is zero. That's a key information that I need. You can think of this for rain droplets as well. When the rain is coming down, it's going to accelerate and it's going to reach a constant velocity. It's terminal velocity, it's going to reach Earth. Okay? Now, let's solve this question. Let's first identify some directions. So let's call this x direction. Okay? Let's call this y direction. Then let's go ahead and write my summation of the forces in the x direction. Okay? I said that when I'm reaching my terminal velocity, it's going to be zero. There will be no acceleration and there will be no deacceleration as well. Okay? So now let me look at my block over here. Okay? And let's draw the free body diagram of it. One force that I know is going to be the weight because its weight is given m is equal to one kilogram. Okay, in any surface there will be a normal force to it from your salt mechanics you may remember. Okay, and now I'm going to add a force from my end, from the fluid mechanics end, and this force is going to resist the flow and it will be the basic to the shear stress times the area because as you remember shear stress is like a pressure in terms of the units, right? Multiply by area will give me the uh, force. Okay, so you may actually you know note something over here. If this was a solid mechanics class, you will have a friction term here, right? So the fluid velocity is like a friction in your solid mechanics. It's going to slow it down. Okay, it's the same thing in a pipe. If there's a flow inside of a pipe, as there's viscous forces, it's going to slow it down. If I turn off the pump, this angle is going to be 10 degrees. Well, then let's go ahead and write this, the forces on the extraction. So it's going to be W dot times sine, right? Sine of 10 degrees minus the shear stress times area will be equal to zero. Good. It doesn't seem that bad. Okay. So let's, I usually look at what I know, what I don't know. Okay. W is given to me as one kilogram times 9.81. So that's known. Good. Sine 10 is just a number. Area is given to me as one meter square in the question statement. The only thing that I don't know is the shear stress. Let's assess that. Okay. But we have a formula from the fluid mechanics. We have viscosity times du dy. And this is given as glycerin, so I should be able to find my viscosity. Okay. Well, let's write this down. So W times sine of 10 degrees minus viscosity times du dy times the area will be equal to zero. Okay, the next thing that I want to assess is this parentheses over here. What is du dy? Okay, so now I need to make some assumption. There was not enough information given to me to say what is the velocity distribution. So let's actually go ahead and zoom into here and plot over here. So what it looks like is this. I have this inclined surface which is not moving and I have this block moving with a velocity of v down and that's v terminal right now I need to know how does the velocity change from here to here I know that's zero here and here is the v terminal right so let's actually write terminal in here v terminal right so now the question is how do this, does this does it change so the glycerin is a Newtonian fluid, okay? However, you, you, you don't really know that. But well, what else can you do, is my question. I wasn't given enough information, how does the velocity change from here to here? So I will assume a linear change. So what I'm gonna say is the velocity is zero, so it's gonna increase, 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 and it's gonna reach V terminal over here, and this is how it's gonna look. Now, 
If I look here and remember y is pointing up like that, what is du dy? Okay. If you remember from the previous segment where I derived the equation for you, I had this du dy is equal to u divided by b. u was the velocity in here and the b was distance from here to here. And both of these will work very well for me. So this is very important. In these type of questions, you may either going to do, you're going to be u will be given as a function of y or you'll measure it, right? Or you're just going to take u over b depending on what I'm dealing with over here, okay? So in this case, I'll do u over b. Okay, good. So now let's go back and write this. w, which is m times g times sine 10 minus viscosity. Viscosity is glycerin is 1.5 newton second per meter square, which is the unit of viscosity, okay? This is the dynamic viscosity, not kinematics. And then what I do is du dy will be, as I mentioned, it's going to be v terminal divided by the distance. But the distance to me is given as 1 millimeter. So I'm converting this to meter. Okay? And the area is given as 1 to me is equal to 0. And m will be 1. This is 9.81, right? And if you, if you punch these numbers into your calculator, you're going to obtain it as your v terminal as 0 0.0011 meter per second. Okay, so this will be the answer to this particular question. So now I always want our, my students to assess whether this is a reasonable answer or not. Okay, this is a fairly small velocity. Does it make sense? Well, I would say yes. Number one, this angle is fairly small. This is only 10 degrees, and the area that it makes contact with is fairly large for a one kilogram. I said one meter square, it's fairly large, okay? That's the other thing. And also, if you look at the glycerin, glycerin is a pretty thick liquid, so it's making a lot of friction for me. So these are all make sense to me.